I did see the students trying to force their way into the school and the staff in the school put chairs on the door to block the students from coming in. Ciao a tutti! Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. So in today's video I am going to talk about some of the things that I saw while I was working in the Italian high schools here in Rome and I'm going to be making some comparisons between the Italian high school and US high schools. A bit more about the Italian high school because I never worked at the high schools in America. I only worked a few years at the high schools here in Rome, but it was enough to see some interesting differences. All right, so let's get started. Cominciamo. I have to confess that one of the oddest things that I saw was actually the first thing that I saw, the first time that I walked into an Italian classroom, and it was the students standing up. I was dumbfounded. I thought, wow, why are they standing up? Cool. I walked into the room and the students stood up. È arrivato il prof. The teacher's here. Now on this, I must clarify, this did not happen all the time. As a matter of fact, this tended to happen more with the younger ages, like when they're 14 or 15 years old. And honestly, yeah, sometimes it happened, sometimes it didn't happen. But I got to confess though, every time that it did, I just felt special, you know. Uh, it's a cool form of respect if you think about it. However, no matter what age they were, if somebody important walked into the room, be it the principal or some other official, then the students would stand up. Next, I want to talk about the oral exams, or as they call them in Italian, interrogazioni. On that note, this is definitely something that I should have put in my previous video where I talked about false friends, because if you look at the word interrogazione, it does look like the word interrogation in English. However, the word for that in Italian is interrogatorio. But anyway, I did mention the, the idea of oral exams in a previous video, and having read some of the comments from some of my Italian viewers, it was so interesting to hear their views on uh, this type of testing. And I must say, um, they did mention a few things that I hadn't considered. I can't imagine doing an oral exam in the high school that I went to. However, that's irrelevant because they're just not done in the United States. Or maybe they are. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if in some state, in some town, in some school, they're done. but. Based on my experiences and just what I know of the American school system, I don't think we do them. So the way it works is this. When your teacher calls you to stand up and you have to answer some of the questions, you don't know exactly what the, what the teacher is going to ask you. So you need to be prepared. You need to really study that subject matter and you need to be prepared for whatever question comes at you. Yeah, that's not easy. So you can imagine the preparation necessary because if you don't, well, you fail. The other advantage that I want to mention about this type of exam is that in a general sense, it does make you into a better speaker because to study a subject and to be able to respond to a question and give um, a well thought out, thorough and good explanation of it, it's a skill and it's not easy. But as you can imagine, this can be a very stressful experience because it depends on the subject because all of us are naturally weaker in some areas and stronger in others. I've actually been in contact with some of the former students that I taught here in Rome and one in particular told me that for her, yes, it was in fact very stressful. In particular with mathematics, her brain would just, just go blank. Mine would too, actually. I hate math. The next one I also mentioned in a previous video a couple of months ago, and much like the oral exams, I would like to share with you what I've learned from my viewers on this topic, and this is seeing the same face for all five years of high school. When thinking of this idea and the high school that I went to, I think I would have jumped out the window the first two weeks, but again, it's irrelevant because that's the American system and the Italian system are just different. If in this classroom of 20, 30 kids, there are a few people that you don't particularly like and maybe you have some conflict with them, yeah, you are forced to be with them every single day for the next five years. But if you think about it, you know, you do learn to put up with these people. You do learn to, you know, um, deal with it because if you don't, then yeah, you go crazy. So with that said, the classroom does in essence become a coping mechanism. You can also look at the Italian classroom in this way. It has the all for one, one for all mentality. If one student screws up, you all pay for it. So it does kind of encourage you to, you know, keep your nose clean. On more than one occasion, I did give the whole class a note for misbehavior. And to this day, I don't really know if it was a real deterrent for bad behavior. Who knows? The next one deals with the type of high schools. And when I first came to this country and people asked me what type of high school I went to, I was confused. I just said, I went to public high school, what are you talking about? But over time, I slowly became more accustomed with Italian culture, and I learned that they do in fact have different types of high schools. We do also in the United States, but let's just say that the classification is somewhat different. 
So thinking back to my high school experience, which was uh, way before the, the invention of the smartphone, uh, but we had, the, we had the possibility to choose the electives. And I remember that I chose marketing. And this is a key difference between American and Italian high schools. So in Italy, before you attend a high school, you choose which one you want to attend. But once you decide on a high school, your curriculum is set. You don't, have the, you don't have the possibility to choose what you want to study in high school because it's all laid out for you. Looking at this objectively, the Italian school system does seem to have a slight advantage. What do I mean? Well, when you choose a certain type of high school that you want to attend, more or less, all the subjects that you're going to take are of your interest. Now, granted, I, I'm willing to bet that there's probably a few subjects that you don't like or some that are more difficult than others. But more or less, everything that you take is in line with, with what you wanted. An interesting side note is that in all the high schools in all of Italy, religion is offered. However, that is always optional. If you're enjoying today's video, make sure you give me a like. Andiamo avanti. Since my eyes have come up in more than one comment in past videos, let me just say that I have a baby, so I don't sleep very well. And this is hay fever season, so... The next one is easily explainable, and this is the lunch hour. Quite simply, Americans eat at school and the Italians eat at home. And the reason why is very simple, because Italians tend to eat later anyway. So the fact that they get home around, I don't know, 2, 2.15, 2.30, that's their lunch hour anyway. Although much like American high schools, they do have a snack around mid-morning, like 11 o'clock. How do Italians get to school? Well, here's what I saw from my experiences. They either walk, they take public transportation, or some of them did, in fact, have their parents drive them. I did see a few kids drive to school, but let's just say that I think this is more common in the United States. Also in Italy, if you happen to live in a small town where there are no high schools, then unfortunately you are forced to take public transportation like any other commuter. So high school can be a bit stressful if you are an Italian teenager in the countryside. Me, personally, for most of my high school career, I took that big classic yellow American bus. I have seen them here in Italy, but they are not nearly as common as they are in the United States. Please keep in mind that everything that I'm saying is simply one man's experience working at the high schools here in Rome, so take it with a grain of salt. The next one deals with lateness, and let's face it, you know, who isn't late when they go to high school, at least once in their career? So the Italians for this had a little justification booklet, as they call it. The booklet was used if you were late for school or if you had to miss school for an entire day. So the name is pretty self-explanatory. If you're late, you need to justify why you're late. And quite often what will happen is if the students are under 18, then their parents would um, write an explanation, they would sign it, and then I would have to sign it as well. On more than one occasion, I did have my suspicions whether or not the students themselves signed the justification booklet. But then again, I had no way of, of actually proving that. So I just signed it and said, okay, have a nice day. One of the main reasons why I'm mentioning this little booklet is that when you're 18, you become an adult, same thing as in, as in America. And so when that happens, you can sign your own justification booklet. And for a lot of kids, this was almost like a personal victory. I can sign my own booklet. You know, in all honesty, I kind of like this idea because it holds you accountable for your actions. This next one I found quite odd the first time I saw it. And in Italian, it's called autogestione. And loosely translated, this means a student runs school. I thought, students running the school? What is this? In essence, it's when, yes, the students run the school for the week, they propose their idea to the principal, and they, in essence, run the school for the week. So I participated in one or two of them, and the bulk of my experience in that was just me sitting in the classroom and waiting for students to come with, uh, for extra English help. But I don't know, honestly, I, I think it was just an excuse to not work for a week, you know? I mean, yeah, I don't have much experience with this, so I really can't say 100% um, what actually happened. But I did see uh, students watching movies. I did see them playing sports, uh, lots of talking, you know, as you can imagine. So, you know, I don't know how effective they really were. There is another type of student-run school, and this is called Occupazione, which loosely translated would be student-occupied school. This, however, is illegal, and I'm not an expert on this. So I'm not really going to say much about it. Let's just say that I had more experience with autogestione. However, in the first high school where I worked in Rome a couple years ago, uh, I did see the students trying to force their way into the school and the staff in the school put chairs on the door to block the students from coming in. So it was kind of weird actually. I did feel like I was a prisoner in the school for a little bit. So next I want to talk about some of the things that exist in America but that don't exist here. I reiterate that these are things that I haven't seen. One of the biggest differences between Italian and American high schools is that in America, we have school teams. 
And in many towns in the United States, the high school team is something very serious. It's something that, you know, brings the whole town together. And many people are very proud of this. It tends to be a culture in and of itself. So naturally with school teams in the United States, then you have the pep rally and spirit week. Haven't seen that here. Another big difference that comes up between American and Italian high schools are lockers. And for the longest time, I always felt sorry for Italians for not having these. However, they are redundant. Let me explain. So if you think back to the fact that Italians are in the same classroom all day, then you really don't need lockers because all your things are right there at your desk. I mean, when you're going from class to class to class, like in the United States, then you do need a locker to put one book in the locker and take the other one out and go. Not in Italy. However, one thing that American students and Italian students do have in common is that heavy backpack. And my back still hurts 20 years later. Something else I want to mention are yearbooks. And in the last high school where I worked, I did see them come out with a yearbook. And they even admitted, yeah, we're copying America. I thought, good. I, I thought yearbooks were a fantastic idea. You know, it's just a way to remember your classmates and your experience long after you've graduated. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, make sure you do that. I make Italy related videos, but more specifically culture videos and videos of a helpful and practical nature. If by any chance you are interested in supporting the channel, then go to the description of this video and you will see the link for Buy Me A Coffee. Thank you. Grazie mille per l'attenzione e ci vediamo alla prossima. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Ciao.